So firstly, do you understand that when you're looking at this, it's five, I'm getting some people zoning out already, you need to be zoning in on this thing right here. When you have five root x plus one, it actually means five times. You guys with me on that? And this means five times. So basically, if you think about the community, commutativity of multiplication, it's this times this times this times that. All four of those things multiply together. Basically, this says I can multiply my fives together and get 25. It says I can multiply my root x plus ones together. What's a square root times itself? I gave you the last bit of class yesterday. It's what now? So it's not the five because we're going to get 25 out of that. Good, good. The square root times itself gives you the radicand. And that's the thing that you need to get stuck in your head. The square root times itself gives you the radicand. Does it work other than square root? No, not cube roots. But if you think about this, this will give you the square root of x plus 1 squared. Do you see it? The square and the square root are going to simplify out of that expression. So this whole thing right here is going to give you 25 because we have 5 times 5. The square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1 is going to give you x plus 1. You okay with that? Now, I've made one major mistake on this problem right now. Yeah. Well, no, there's no square root. There's no square root because of this. Uh, I'm going to write down here so you can see this one last time. I'm not going to show this ever again. But if you have the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1, which that is exactly what you have here. Do you understand if I, if I reassociate those? This is the square root of x plus 1 squared. Believe me? Boom. x plus 1. However, it must be in parentheses. Do you follow that? That's the last thing I showed you on Friday, last Friday. So while we don't have a square root here, we've taken care of the square root. That's what that does. We do have to have some parentheses because 25 is getting multiplied by that entire expression. Nod your head if you're still with me. Okay. Moving on, now the rest of it shouldn't be all that bad. This is the hardest part for you. This is where most people make mistakes is on this first expression right there. What they usually do is they'll give me 25 square root of x plus 1. <coughs> they'll still have a square root. Are you going to have a square root? No. No, if you multiply a square root times itself, that's got to do something, right? It's got to change your expression somehow. You can't just give me the same thing over again. That'd be like going, oh, this is this. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. It's actually a square. It changes something about it. Okay, moving on. Now, let's look at this expression right here. Tell me what that's going to be. Do I distribute the 2 inside my radical? No. So how much is this expression? 10. 10. Plus 10. Square root. I still have a square root on that one, don't I? Because I have it multiplied by a square root there. Okay, so I have 25x plus 1. Where does the square root go? You multiply it a square root times itself. That gets rid of that radical. I showed you why down here about 10 seconds ago. Here, the 2 gets multiplied by our, our There's no root here. It cannot go inside of the root. Same thing happens here. It's, a, it's an exact same expression. I just have the 2 in front of my 5 instead of behind my root. So I get plus another 10 square root of x plus 1. And lastly, I have that plus 4 hanging on to the back end. <laughs> <coughs> I need a show of hands making sure you can follow me down that far. Now I gotta warn you, I'm doing this, I know what I'm doing. Uh, when, when you're doing this on your own, I need to make sure that you can actually do this. I need to make sure you can do that. So practice this on your own when you get to do things like this. I know you've had homework on it. Uh, I'm hoping that you did it this way. If you didn't, you need to go back on that homework. That's why it's not due today, it's due on Wednesday. Go back on the homework and fix some of the stuff up if you did not do that. Okay, you need to go back and look at that. Uh, now, are we done? No, when I ask that question, chances are we're probably not. Uh, what else could I do on this problem? Is your distribute fine? Sure, I can distribute that. You know why? Because I'm going to end up getting some like terms somewhere in this expression. So when I distribute, we'll get 25x plus 25. You see where that's coming from? Plus, yeah, we're, we can actually combine these. Look at that. That's 10 square root of x plus 1. It's another 10 square root of x plus 1. I have like radicals. How much does that give me? 20. 
Good, the square root of x plus 1. The square roots don't go away. You need to know the difference between multiplying two square roots and adding two square roots. When you add the square roots, those are just like radicals. You don't do anything with them. When you multiply them, yes. It's very much like adding like terms and multiplying like terms. There's similarity there. And then lastly, we have a plus 4. Tell me if there's anything else I can do. What do you think? Good, yeah, those are like terms. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write 25x. That's here. There's no like terms of 25x. I do have a plus 20 square root of x plus 1. That's this thing. Got that. But lastly, I have 25. 4, that'll give me plus 29 at the back end of my expression. Do you think I can combine anything else besides those things? No. Then you're, you're done. They look kind of weird, right? Because you have some x's going on, you got some square roots going on, you got some whole numbers going on. That's typically what happens in these types of expressions, especially when you're multiplying uh, expression, uh, these, these binomials that have two terms, one of which has a, a root and one of which doesn't. And you get a lot of weird things happening on that. Are you ready to try some on your own? Yeah, I'm going to give you one like this. This will be the last type of example we do. This will probably be the most difficult type of multiplication that, that you, you're, you're shown. So if you can do this thing, you should be feeling pretty good about yourself right now. That's a good thing. So we'll start off kind of nice and easy. We'll build up to that. So on these things, we need to be sure that we are simplifying, though. Do not, do not just leave it as this. Okay, if you leave it as this, you're <coughs> not all the way down. I need you to get all the way down to this expression. So here's your first one. Remember, I want to see all the steps. I don't want you doing any of this in your head. Write out every single step that you do. So show the distribution in a step. After you show the distribution, then you use those properties of radicals that we've been talking about in this class. What you can multiply, what you can't multiply together, such as a, a constant in time of a, inside of a root, inside of that radical, and then we try to simplify. I'm going to pause you here. We're going to do the first one to make sure you're on the right track just to, to see if we're getting this okay, all right? So first thing, of course, we don't have a foil situation. We have one term outside of our parentheses. What this means is what I need to see from you, instead of doing this in your head, I need to see that you know you're distributing square root of 5 times 2 and then plus square root of 5 times square root of 15. Did you write it out like that? Yeah. Okay, two things you can multiply in and get one root. Two things you can't. Which one can you multiply in and get one root out of that? The first one or the second one? Okay, good. So this, where we, we can't get the square root of 10 on that because the square root of 2 does not have a root. 
that was our rule, right? The product rule says that if you have two roots, sure. If you don't, only thing you can do with this expression is write 2 squared 5. That's all you can do. The next one, however, you do have a square root and a square root. The same type of root they're being multiplied. So in this case, you can get the square root of what's that? Put your hand if you made it that far. Good deal. That's one more thing you can do. Do you see it? 75, you can break it, and get 25 and 3, and you get 5. Good. You should end with 5 root 3 on that example. That's 25 times 3, square root 25 is 5, then the root 3, you leave that root 3. So here our ending answer is 2 root 5 plus 5 root 3. Show of hands how many people got that far. Okay, good. If you left it right here, remember that you are always looking to simplify radicals at the end of your problem, okay? You're always looking to do that. So here you go, oh yeah, great, that's perfect. That's fantastic, go one more step. <laughs> Give me the square root of 75 into 5 root 3. Do you see how we're getting 5 root 3 out of that? Yes or no? Okay, 5 root 3, that's coming because this is 25 times 3. That gives you 5 root 3. Okay, I'll give you about another 30 seconds to wrap this one up, and then we'll work on that one. Remember, the, the writing out the distribution really, really, really helps on this. Write that out, that way you can see it. Instead of trying to picture it, you can see it on the paper. Write out the distribution. When I say write out the distribution, the first step that we need to be showing is that this actually means this times itself. That's what we, we mean to do. And that's why we actually have to distribute. There's, there's no way that an exponent can be, if you want to call it distributed, across addition that doesn't work. That's not one of our rules. So what we have to do on this is actually FOIL this. There's one, two, three, four expressions we're going to get. Just like we did on that example over there, only fortunately for us there's no number in front of these these roots. So it makes things a little bit nicer. Now when you distribute, what I want to see out of you is everything written out. So when you do the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2, I want to see that. That's our first expression. Next up we have square root of x plus 2 times 3. Show me that. Of course it's going to be a plus, positive times a positive. Right at the same time. There we go. That takes care of our first two multiplications. Then we have our three times our square root of x plus two. And lastly, we're going to get how much? Nine. Square root of plus nine. 